In this video, we take a look at Union Bay Campground in Porcupine Mountain Wilderness State Park in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Check it out. Hey guys, I'm Kevin with Kemp Outside, your inside source for all things outside. Well, today we're going to do a video review of the campground in Porcupine Mountain Wilderness State Park and specifically the Union Bay Campground. There's two campgrounds uh, in the park. There's the campground at Union Bay and then there's also a campground at Presque Isle. We're gonna do the Union Bay Campground which is right on Lake Superior. Very, very cool campground. We're gonna do a review of that today, so stay tuned. Let's get right into it. Oh, by the way guys, if you wanna see our camping adventure from Porcupine Mountain Wilderness State Park, I'm gonna put a link right up here. You can check that out. Let's get right into the review. Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park is in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, right on Lake Superior. It's just west of Ontonagon, Michigan, and it's easily accessed by Duluth and Green Bay in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park is a very large state park with lots to see and do. There's amazing hiking trails and, of course, great views of Lake Superior. The Union Bay Campground is the campground we're going to take a look at today, and it's indicated by the red arrow. And it's in the far eastern corner of the park right on Lake Superior. Here's a look at the campground map. So you can see there are quite a few sites here. Sites are equipped with electric hookup, but no water or sewer. There are water fill stations and a dump station available. Let's take a look at the restroom facilities. The main restroom facility in the Union Bay Campground at Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park is located right in the center of the campground. It's a full-service restroom facility with running water, hot showers, and flush toilets. Here's a look at the restroom facility. So it's easily accessed by both sides of the campground. And it's actually really nice, and it was pretty clean the entire time we were there. So here's a walk through the men's restroom facility. So you can see there's sinks uh, and then some urinals. Obviously the sinks have a mirror in front of them. And then a couple of stalls. So there's a regular stall and then there is a handicap stall right next to it. So the shower facilities are separate from the main restroom portion. Separate from the main men and women's restroom is this handicapped accessible room that does have a toilet, a sink, and then a shower. So this is a really nice uh, separate room for anyone with any kind of mobility issues or that kind of thing. There's also a baby changing station. So a really handy room, uh, easy to adjust, uh, shower there. So this was awesome. And then here is the just the regular shower room. So there's an area there with a bench and a place to you know change your clothes. And then if you step inside here, here is the main shower uh, area for uh, non-handicapped users. These rooms aren't too big, but there are plenty of room, and it's a private shower, which is really really nice. So here is a look at the handicap shower stall. So uh, the previous handicap uh, facility we showed you was a toilet and shower. This is just a handicap shower and it is quite large and very, very easy as you can see to get a wheelchair in there with a bench and that kind of thing. Really, really nice. And then also in this facility is a laundry room. So you can uh, go in there there's a uh, bench for folding uh, laundry and then coin operated washers and dryers for your use and as you can see there uh, the washer and dryer both take six quarters so it's a dollar fifty to wash and a dollar fifty to dry so three dollars per load this campground has a couple of yurts you can reserve let's take a look at one you can't drive right up to your yurt. It's a small walk, but it's not bad. So the red arrow indicates where you park to access the yurts. 
The yurts are equipped with a fire pit with grow grate. That's a bear box for a cooler. You can put your cooler in there and keep it from the bears. So there's the fire pit with grow grate. Great view of the lake uh, through the woods and a picnic table. And of course the door was locked so I couldn't get in the yurt, but I'm gonna hold the camera up to the glass so you can see uh, what it looks like inside. Basically there's a wood burning stove, a couple of bunk beds and a desk and a chair. Pretty cool little setup if you are not bringing your own tent, but you want a uh, kind of a neat experience. No campground is complete without a playground. Just ask my kids. Check it out. All right. The most important part of a campground, if you ask my youngest son, is the playground. The playground is indicated by the red arrow, and it is a pretty nice playground. It's set off the uh, campground road a little bit, which is cool. There's also a couple of pit toilets and trash facilities located right next to the campground, which comes in handy, and a bike rack so kids can ride their bike to the playground and then play. And then there's uh, you know some benches and, and picnic tables near the playground so the parents can sit and watch their kids. The ground is made up of AstroTurf, which is really nice so the kids aren't getting muddy when they play. And there's some pretty cool stuff to play on. There's a look at one of the picnic tables. And that's a look at the playground. Let's take a driving tour. We'll start our driving tour by going through the gatehouse and following the red path around the outer loop of the campground. So here we are coming into the Union Bay campground. On the left there was the dump station. So there are no uh, full hookups in this campground but there is a dump station for your use if you are uh, camping in an RV or a travel trailer. As we make our way into the campground, we're going to hang a right. And this campground loop is one way, and you can see that the uh, campsites are marked on the pavement, so you can see we're passing campsite three and four. We're going to continue to go straight instead of hanging a left there. So camp, passing campsite six. So this campground is pretty open. Uh, there's not a lot of vegetation to block sight lines. Most likely you're going to see your neighbors and they're going to see you. There are a couple of campsites that are more wooded. Uh, we stayed in one, uh, but most of it is pretty wide open. Uh, passing campsite 9 on the right. So the sites on the right are right up against uh, Lake Superior, which is really cool. Most of them have some pretty good views. Shout out to Walt the People Mover over there, the schoolie conversion. Uh, got to meet them. Uh, it was really cool to see them. Just past site 17. Nineteen on the left, eighteen on the right. So the sites on the right, yeah, and you don't want site twenty-one when it rains, as you can see there. Uh, the sites on the right aren't terribly deep, so people park uh, at an angle, but they do have a great view of the of the lake. And then, as you can see, uh, this you know these sites on the left here, like like site twenty-six, are very very shallow. But you can see you can get a giant fifth wheel in there if you're creative enough, uh, or a whole bunch of tents. So people make do the best way uh, they know how. And we're passing site 28 on the right. Where this giant class A is there, site 29 is probably one of my one of my favorite sites. And then there's this little tiny home here, which I am guessing is going to be available for rent, but uh, I don't think it's available yet. It might be by now, I don't know. As we make our way up the hill, we're going to pass the yurt parking. So that's on the right there where you see those two cars. And then I like these two sites right here, 32 and 33. They offer probably some of the most privacy in the campground there. You're a little bit farther off away from, from everybody else. If you're looking for a more private site, that's what I would recommend. And as we come around the back side, uh, passing site 34 on the left, and then on the right is parking for the playground, and the playground is up that gravel road. There is a water spigot for water. 
as you can see this campground is pretty wide open just past site 39 there's site 41 it's a little harder to read the sites on the right hand side but there's site 43 you can definitely figure it out and as you can see we had a lot of rain when I recorded this and so there were definitely some sites that had some puddles there's the restroom facility on the left and there's parking available so you can drive to the restroom if you need to and then passing site 50 on the right, site 52 on the left. I, decora I definitely recommend sites on the outer portion of the loop so that you don't have anyone behind you. But if you don't care about that or you're just looking for a couple of sites, you know, that's okay too. Uh, the sites on the right here, so that's site 59. Uh, that's a pretty wooded and private site. I like that one. Uh, site uh, 61 on the right there that was our site and then site 63 on the right are pretty private sites so pretty nice okay so what we're gonna do is we are going to hang a right and then we're gonna drive up the middle road so that you can see the middle section of the campground So instead of going out the campsite, we're going to turn left here. And then instead of going straight, we're going to go left again and go right up the center. So again, if you're a tent camper, you should definitely be concerned about some of these puddles. But we had a lot of rain. I mean, it rained. It, it dropped buckets. So... I'm hoping that the campground doesn't normally get this much rain, but I don't know because I've only been to this park twice in my entire life. So we're passing 73 on the left and 72 on the right. But as you can see, you know, again, the sites are pretty wide open. And then here is the other side of the restroom facility. And again, some parking so you can drive to it if you need to. The sites on the right have a little more uh, shade, a, a few more trees, but there's some decent shade on the, on the left side too, although it is a little more open. Passing site 85 on the right there, site 90 on the left. But this should give you a pretty good idea of what the campsites are like in the Union Bay campground at Porcupine Mountain Wilderness State Park. So like site 99 there on the left uh, is is actually a pretty big site so if you have a bigger rig uh, it's not too not too bad and it's butts up the trees on one side. Straight ahead is the yurt parking and then there's a little trail past that that you walk down to to get to the yurts. And so we've done this drive before, but again, uh, 32 and 33 are great wooded sites. And so we're going to take this road out of the campground. So you've seen this before. Uh, but these sites on the left too, like 34 and 35, are pretty big for sites that have sites behind you. Uh, all the sites on the right uh, have pretty big open fields uh, behind you, as you can see from the camera there. So uh, you have a lot of space behind you, so those are really big sites. Probably the best sites if you have big fifth wheels or, or, or you know travel trailers or uh, Class A RVs and you need a lot of space, uh, those sites are pretty good. You see the blue water hookups around the site, so uh, these sites have electric hookup but no water or sewer. So you have to fill your tanks on occasion uh, or you know carry water in, in, in cans or something like that.
And again, if you're looking for wooded sites, these next few sites on the right are pretty good. So that's site 59. And then 61 and 63. I will tell you that we were in site 61 and with all this rain that site turned into a giant mud pit. We called it mud apocalypse. We basically broke down our tents, threw them in our trailer and took them on to the next park we were staying in. So as we head out here you're going to see the uh, check-in station straight ahead. If you go off to the left there there's a boat ramp that goes out to Lake Superior which is really cool. And then we'll just drive through the dump station here so you can see uh, that there's two sides of the dump station, so very uh, easy access can service two RVs or travel trailers at once. And that is a driving tour of the Union Bay Campground at Porcupine Mountain Wilderness State Park. Well guys, I hope you found that review useful. Porcupine Mountain Wilderness State Park is a must-do if you're in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. What a fantastic park. Just an incredible place to explore. We saw lots of wildlife. We were there. We saw a salamander crossing the road, a bunch of turtles, deer, all kinds of stuff. What a great park, and I can't recommend it enough. Definitely add it to your bucket list. Visit the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's an amazing place. So guys, Camp Outside exists to help moms and dads take their kids camping, hiking, fishing, learn about nature, and develop a conservation ethic. We want to help you get you and your kids outside. That's why we do these campground reviews. So if you have any questions about Porcupine Mountain Wilderness State Park or camping in general, drop something in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Or if you stayed there before, we'd love to hear about your stay and what you did there and how you liked it. You can also connect with us at our other social media. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Or, our, or you can connect with us on our website at campoutside.com. So guys, if you like the video, definitely give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon that notifies you when we release new videos. We have more campground review videos coming from the Midwest, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching Camp Outside, guys. It means the world to me. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.